Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to Firing Synapses. This is a show all about exploration. I want to learn what makes you, you. This includes your hobbies, passions, whatever else drives an emotion. However, if you want to come on just to vent about what's currently bothering you, I'm perfectly fine with that as well. My goal for this show is for you to have a good time, learn something, and have the opportunity to talk about what you normally would not get a chance to share with others. Thank you and enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. For all those return listeners, I thank you very much. I appreciate the love. For all those who are new to this endeavor, I am your host, Matt. On today's episode, I am joined by the host of uh, TV Trivia Pod. Please, everyone, welcome to the show, Brian. Hi, Brian. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. So we have, uh, like I said before we started, we have a... Uh, a baseline of what we're going to be talking about, which uh, I'm sure we're going to derail and talk about other things. But uh, I know when we contacted each other, you were telling me about Ultimate Frisbee and bike touring, um, both of which I have, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much zero knowledge on. So <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't mind, we'll start with Ultimate Frisbee. Um, what's How did you get involved with that? Tell me a little quick synapses on that, if you don't mind. Man, I have to say now, now that I look back and I'm giving you those two things, like it sounds like I'm a much more active person than I, I think I give myself credit for. Like, oh, I like running for ultimate Frisbee and biking all the time. I'm like, oh, well, I spend a good bit of my time on my couch as well. So <laughs> ultimate Frisbee, almost like tag with a Frisbee sort of i think i've described it before as a combination of like football and soccer so uh you know you play on i believe a football field it's a 70 yard field with 20 yard end zones at the ends of those and i believe it's a 40 uh, 40 meters wide and it's a seven on seven team all right so that's just a little logistics of how you actually play uh if you have the frisbee you cannot run all right. In order to advance the Frisbee, you must throw it to a teammate. All right. And in order to score, that teammate must must catch it in the end zone. All right. So you can't run it or anything. You have to throw it into the end zone. And uh, that's that's the basis for ultimate Frisbee. Is there any type of like tackling or like flag football where like you're down by uh, contact or something like that? It is a it is a non-contact sport for the most part. You know, uh, I, I, there's my fair share of uh, blood stories from Ultimate Frisbee. But uh, but, you know, if you're if you're both going for the Frisbee, you know, there's going to be some contact there. But once I have the Frisbee, you can't like slap it or like rip it out of my hands, you know, uh, so you can like defend me or knock it out of the air. But you can't take it from me. And so and you said, once you catch it, you're, you're stuck. You can throw it either what forward or backwards. Yep. You have any direction and uh, you have 10 seconds. Oh, really? Uh, so, they yeah. might've changed it to seven, but uh, you have yeah. a shot clock. Basically you, you right. know, you got to catch and release almost, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 You can't uh, stand there for like, you know, a minute while your team figures out, uh, you know, a play or, you know, they're just tired and they're sitting there and you have no one to pass it to. You have to do something. I mean, almost for a second there, it almost sounded like rugby, but like rugby, you can rug, run with the ball and you can only pass it laterally or behind you, kind of like in regular football as well. Um, rugby, surprisingly, I, you know, didn't get involved in that. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big guy and, you know, if I probably, if I had a rugby team, I probably would have joined it because I think I'm built like a rugby player. But uh, I think I did play Ultimate Frisbee. For, uh, this is probably like 20 years ago at this point. You know, <laughs> I'm like, just like playing D&D. I don't know if we were doing it right. They were throwing Frisbees. Um, so there's, a, and there's only like one like Frisbee in play, right? There's right. Not, 
Right. I mean, uh, I got started at a, a church camp growing up, you know, a summer church camp thing. And, you know, there's like, you know, everybody is on the field. There's probably like 20 versus 20 right now. And, you know, uh, after you catch it, that catch the Frisbee, people are like, oh, you can take three steps. That's a load of crap, you know. Uh, so once I once I started playing, a, getting like super into it and playing in college and stuff, that's uh, that's when I learned a little more. I think when we played, it was uh, you can go until somebody touches you and then you have to throw it. Oh, my gosh. What a load <laughs> of crap. Well, I've never heard of that before. Dude, but is... speaking of rugby, though, like, uh, I don't know. You said you, you, like, you might be surprised you don't play rugby. I honestly don't know if I know anybody that plays rugby. That's just not one of those sports that's big in America. Yeah, um, it was one of those just flipping through the channels and, you know, you see rugby and they're pretty much at the most. They're wearing like the like 1970s football leather helmets with a little bit of padding. And that's like three people on the field. Uh, there for a short period, I was really into watching it. I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I kind of watch, I'd rather watch rugby sevens compared to regular rugby because I think regular rugby is standardized as 15 per side, uh, where rugby sevens is seven per side. There's two halves of seven minutes a piece and just go back and forth. And depending on an intense sport. Yeah. There's all kind of like scrums and like, there's all kind of physical contact with it. Like there's like, you know, you have big piles going back and forth and, you know, trying to watch it blankly. I'm like, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot going on that I've never seen before watching rugby, man. That's one. I wish that was bigger in the, in the United States. And another one is hurling. Are you familiar with hurling? No. Uh, this was my junior year of college, did a study abroad, and then met my family in Ireland after. And uh, we had friends from Ireland. How? Because we were on a cruise. Uh, never mind. Doesn't, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of background details. Anyway, we meet up with this friend, and he's on a, on a hurling team. And it is a wicked, brutal sport. And uh, you, you have a ball. Uh, it's like a lacrosse tennis ball. Tennis ball size solid ball solid thing of rubber and uh the players have these wooden pallets almost with notches in them so you can hit the ball up the field and stuff but uh you're watching this ball get like up in the middle of the field for for like the tip off and some people are going to grab it some people are hitting it with this metal stick this metal i don't like oh holy smokes you know like He's, this it's a brutal it was brutal to watch it almost sounds like um oh wait my I'm, I'm drawing a blank but uh harry potter um Quidditch? yeah there we go with the, <laughs> with the bludgers and, and, you know that's I, I almost thought that's where you're going for a second there uh, they did have multiple ways of scoring you could shoot it in the net with the goalie and that was for three points or hit it in like the football you know uh uprights yeah, 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 for one point. Uh, but man, somebody from the other team scored and was doing a quick victory lap. Someone from the other team was walking by and kneed him in the gut as he was running, and he got a yellow card. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Oh, man, it was crazy. So if we're talking about sports that are big other, where, uh, other places that you probably never heard of, I looked up. Well, somehow in my YouTube suggestion was Tech Ball, T E Q B A L L. I think that's what it was. I don't so, think I'm familiar. All right. So let me try to paint a picture for you. It's a combination of soccer, uh, volleyball, and table tennis. So, <laughs> so you have, think of like, like I've uh, seen this before. Okay. So it's almost like a table tennis. Uh, table i have not seen this before but it, so, so it's it's i think the same dimensions are close to like a, a table tennis or ping pong whatever you want to call it table but instead of being nice and flat it's curved kind of like one of those uh mac mouses you know you kind of like shape it so it has a little bit of an arch to it sure there's a uh i don't know two or three inch uh plexiglass net we'll call that um and then there is two, I think you can 
play singles or doubles, I think. But it's kind of like volleyball where volleyball and soccer where you can't really use your hands, but you can use your head, your knee, your your uh your feet. And I think it doubles both teammates have to touch the ball at least once. And you're not allowed to touch the ball with the same part of your body back to back. Even if you like hit it with your chest to your partner and they kick it with their foot, you can't hit it with your chest back over the over the net. And it, it's kind of weird. Like even if you serve it back and forth, so you got to constantly switch up the part that you're hitting it with. It's very interesting to watch. Wow, I'm having a hard time picturing that honestly, but I would love to see. You know, I where I thought you were going was uh, I saw only once ever uh, it was volleyball, but no hands. So they played on a sand court, but, you know, they were kicking it, heading the ball over, passing it back and forth, not using their hands. I couldn't believe what was happening. It was incredible. Those guys were so talented. I think I saw that too, but yeah, I can't remember what that's called. But yeah, I I do remember that. Let's see if I can look that up. Um, But yeah, I just happened to to look at, I was on somebody's other's uh, podcast and like, I just like was waiting for him to sign on and then I saw it and I couldn't stop watching the hour or so episode of Brazil and like Hungary playing against each other is very interesting to watch. I was like, I was like, yeah, come on, Brazil, let's go. (laughs) Another one I saw, uh, maybe just YouTube clips of, I don't know if I ever saw this on TV, but it was basketball with trampolines. It's called slam ball. And uh, I think it's on a normal size basketball court, uh, but there's trampolines all around the, the key area. And, you know, uh, people are like, you know, doing all these crazy throws and uh, jumps. And it, it was it was so much fun to watch. It's also a full contact sport. So I think I saw someone get clotheslined on this <laughs> uh, slam ball court. It was it was crazy. So I know the people at home can't see this, but can you see my screen of tech ball? Yeah. So see how it's got that like a little bit of an arch to it. There's a little plexiglass uh, net and like every time they hit it, they have to hit it with a different part. And, you know, it, like I couldn't stop watching this. You know, <laughs> I was like, this is so fascinating. <laughs> wow. But yeah, it's it's one of those sports that, you know, you know, you don't think about it until like if you're outside. Uh, of that hobby you know you don't think about it but if you're inside of it it's uh you know a way of life like like pretty much i've I've, every ever episode on here has you know sometime i bring up my my cornhole addiction and everyone's like oh i thought that was just something you play at you know a barbecue or a backyard or on the beach which obviously you can there's nothing wrong with you know being social and stuff like that but i try to play competitively so two, three times a week, I'm, you know, playing for money, trying to get better on skills. I, uh, I compete in uh, the American Cornhole League, which is um, uh, in the 70 range. I forget where I'm at in New Jersey. I forget what, what I'm ranked. Wow. Um, I forget where, like, I forget where I am, like, in the Northeast, but pretty decent for someone who's only been playing since July. So not even a year. Uh, and people don't realize how much, you know, strategy is into like putting the bags in a certain spot and blocking it and making it harder for your opponent. Listen, uh, but there's no doubt there's a competitive aspect to it though. If, if there's any fun thing where people compete, there's a way to compete for it for money and, uh, an athletic version of it. I know, uh, I know the brewery, uh, local brewery, uh, Sly Fox, uh, they do a can jam tournament every year and the winner leaves with their weight in beer so like there's there's some like high uh prerogative here some very nice incentives here to be really good at can jam and uh, start t- training and get good at that can you explain can jam because i don't i'm not sure if i'm familiar with that yeah yeah can jam's another uh frisbee frisbee related sport uh sport uh, i don't know uh but you have two uh, I don't know, garbage can sized uh, containers uh, that are maybe a little wider than a Frisbee, kind of like a hoop is for a basketball. Okay. And uh, you have one person, you, you place the, the cans maybe, I don't know, let's say 20 feet apart. 
you're on one, you're next to one can, your teammate is next to another, you throw the frisbee and your teammate has to hit it in, in the top of the can jam thing. There's a little slit on the side there where if you get it in there, it's an automatic win. Okay. So, um, and it's similar to uh, cornhole where, you know, if you hit the container, you know, it's like one point. If you can get it in without your teammate, it's like three. If your teammate hits it in, it's two points. Okay. And you I, play up to like 21. Yeah. Not once you start describing it, I think I've seen it before. Um, so is, is that kind of, not, I know it's going to, it's going to be completely different, but then like uh frisbee golf or froth as i like to call it i mean that's <laughs> <laughs> frisbee golf i mean uh you're still getting both of them into a target i guess but you know uh frisbee golf is i guess more similar to to golf where you have a you have a place where you start and you throw the frisbee until you get it into the net for frisbee golf and there's uh for lack of turns there's different like this for different situations like you might have a, a driver disc that goes further and you might have a, a putting disc that you know goes shorter if, if i'm correct right yes yes you are correct <laughs> i don't have much experience with those i never super liked how they felt in my hand so if i was ever playing with friend i would just bring a regular ultimate frisbee disc uh regular regular just disc to play with but uh but yeah yeah it's fun so since you bring that up, how different are ultimate frisbee discs compared to frisbee golf discs? That, from your small knowledge of what you have, I guess. Sure, sure. Well, ultimate discs are supposed to be 175 grams, uh, and they're you know usually the size of a plate, I guess. You know, and uh, frisbee golf discs are much smaller uh i don't know i guess i would compare them to like a salad plate maybe or uh and the lip is is a lot shallower as well it, it just feels weird on my fingers so uh I'm, I'm just not used to that which one has a shallower lip is that the uh frisbee golf one correct yeah is that kind of like so it can slip through the chains better or something like that or yeah i I have no idea. I'm assuming it has something to do with the way you can throw it and uh, the way it does its, uh, you know, turns at the end or at the beginning here with those, uh, you know, putters and wedges and stuff. Because in Ultimate Frisbee, you're you're passing a lot, so you need something better to get a hold of, correct? I mean, is that right. kind of... Whereas Frisbee Golf, you're throwing it and you're trying to cut down on air resistance and um, things of that nature, I would think. Yeah, I don't have much experience with the actual frisbee golf discs, but uh, but uh, yeah, the regular ultimate discs I feel pretty pretty good about. I do know a couple that uh, I see them every once in a while that they they'll go out and play uh, frisbee golf, and I'm trying to get them on the show, but they're they're both musicians, which at now time you know it's kind of hard to like get a good gig that like every like Friday or Saturday one of them was playing like. One of them was in one cover band. The other one was in another cover band and they were both in a third cover band together. So they, they were constantly like at bars and you know, things like that. That uh, is a hard schedule to, uh, to work with. That is not, not your normal uh, workday schedule being a musician. <laughs> that and uh, she's also a model and a hairdresser. So she kind of like, Balances all kind of plates, you know, all kind of discs, you know. <laughs> Where do you find the time? Wow. Good for her. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of those people I, I I when I was doing photography, well, that's another thing I, I do like I I scatter my my time on different places and I just happened to see her on Instagram and I said, Oh, yeah, I started following her and then she's like, Well, I'm in a band. If you know you're you're interested on the Saturday, you can come out. You know, say hi. I'm like, we'll do that. Sure, no problem. So I've been kind of in good contact with her, but you know, because of you know the world as it is today, you know, it, to find live gigs that are inside are almost impossible. So yeah, I don't, I don't envy being in that position right now. I um, I, I guess I'm fortunate enough. I guess, I, I guess that's the word uh, phrase that my job didn't shut down at all during this uh from you know march to now it's ha stayed the same it hasn't uh you know changed so i was fortunate enough that 
you know, I didn't have to go on unemployment or, you know, sit out for a while. Um, you know, some days are better than others out there, but that that's going to be every job. So, um, I, I actually, I think I made more money during this time of worry, I guess, uh, because you can't really go out anywhere and spend my money. So, you know, trying to save it up and, you know, can't go on vacation or cruises. So spend my money on cornhole bags and, physical D and D stuff that I only play digitally, which, you know, I like to collecting things. So <laughs> and D and D is one of those things that I would like to get into, man. Uh, I don't know. It, it was one of those things when you were in high school, along with anime that you were just told to kind of avoid. Uh, and ever since I have found out that anime is incredible. Uh, there's so much good stuff out there. And uh, I've just been really wanting to play d and I'm just intimidated, I guess, because, you know, there's books, there's volumes on rules and stuff. I got two books right here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, but it's actually easier than I thought it was. Um, if you go back and listen to my episode, uh, Imagination with uh, Dyson Math, uh, it's actually when I rebooted this show, um, I had two people on talking about Dungeons and Dragons. And it's actually easier to get in than I thought it would be. Uh, but I'm also the person of once I'm into something, I get like tunnel vision and that's all I pay attention to. So I uh, there's a show called Critical Role where there is a bunch of voice actors. They're all playing Dungeons and Dragons. They're, they're playing this one campaign for two to three years. And uh, I'm on episode 20. I want to say of like 125 each of them are like three hours long so I'm like I can't, I gotta, holy <laughs> smokes three to four hours long so man uh yeah I mean uh, I I've just seen a whole bunch I know there's a whole bunch of podcasts about it and you know another thing that really appeals to me I guess is maybe the improv nature of it like improv comedy is I think my favorite form of comedy you know uh, whose line is it anyway is incredible you know I've those are my favorite comedy podcasts to listen to, like a uh, Spontanea Nation and uh, Big Grande's Teachers Lounge and You're the Man Now, Dog. Like these are all just improv comedy podcasts that I'm just in love with, and I feel like Dungeons and Dragons really lends itself to this type Genre? of yeah, entertainment. Yeah, sure. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that, that's another thing. Like I like to play a lot of like open world games, like anything by Bethesda. Uh, you know, Skyrim and Fallout and stuff like that. So, you know, you're allowed to go out and do what you want to do, play your characters as good or evil or neutral. And, you know, hey, if I want to do this stealthily, I can go ahead and do that. If I want to do it, you know, guns are blazing, I could do that as well, which that's kind of what D&D allows you to do, where you can, unlike like a video game that's as, as open, sandboxy as they can do it, you know, your imagination can always go further than that. You know, they can only program so much into a disc or, you know, a file, even with DLC and stuff like that, which this allows you to be who you want to be and without limitation for the most part. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember a friend talking about it in high school and uh, he was a wizard. They were, they got to like the final dragon boss of the game and uh, you know, he, this guy was just apparently screwing around and uh, the dungeon master really didn't like that. He was like, oh, I'm a wizard. I'm going to turn the dragon's blood to wine. And dungeon <laughs> master, you can't do that. You would need like a 20 to do that. He was like, oh, I'm going to do it. And he rolls a 20 and effectively kills this dragon by turning its blood to wine. And I'm like, you know, that just must have been so much fun to be with. And when you roll that and everybody's going to freak out and... Oh man, it, it just sounds like fun. Yeah, I mean, I I found a couple groups that I play with. The first group I really liked it, but then he was the guy. The dungeon master said he was hosting fourteen other games, and that's how he makes a living. And this one was a free one, so he had to fold it. I said, "Yo, it is what it is." So then I found another group that. So there's not there's rules and there's not rules type of thing, and they kind of just like, "Hey, we're just gonna like." We're going to do it our way completely, not you know, disregard any of the the you know the rule book rules. I'm like, this isn't really for me. 
so I found this other group that I kind of, we're all kind of clicking. We're all seem like we're sharing the spotlight. We're not, you know, overpowering each other. We're having a blast with it. So I just can't wait till the next session to come along. So. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what makes a ton of difference. Just making sure you're all on the same page there. I'm still trying to find a physical, uh, play session. You know, everything is all digital through discord and other couple other sites that they use, but, uh, you know, until, you know, COVID is pretty much a thing of the past, which it might be a while, you know, uh, getting out and being, you know, what you were doing in 2018 is, is not going to happen for a while. So now is there a physical thing for Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah. I mean, sometimes depending on who you play with, it can all be theater of the mind, uh, with little to no dice rolling. It could all just be storytelling, uh, collective storytelling basically like like a twist a plot book but with mul multiple people telling the same a similar story sure um there's also you know miniatures that you can play with like with grids and like it's more for combat and stuff like that so you can get like flanking and positioning and think you know make sure you're doing everything you want to and kind of everything in between there's there's um uh, set like modules that you can like run through and say, well, this is, you know, good for anyone who's level like one through five. It kind of walks you through it and like the stories there. Some people do like homebrews where they um they make up the story uh you know outside of the game and kind of bring it in and kind of free flow to however they feel. So it's kind of like there's there's there is a physical and then there's also you can be completely no props, no dice, you know, you know, there's even like Rick and Morty uh, stuff that you can do if you really want to get into that. You know, there's all kind of like you, like D&D &D or any other role playing game can be kind of set anywhere like zombies or, you know, anything like that. So it's whatever platform you're on can can range vastly. Sure. Sure, man. Uh, Rick and Morty D&D. &D, that sounds it does sound like fun too. I, I just uh, wrapped up a trivia, some trivia sessions on Rick and Morty. So, uh, yeah, that, that can always be a wild ride. And it's one of those things where, like, the more you watch it, the more you can get. Like, like Spaceballs. I, I've I've watched that movie so many times. <laughs> I always find new things to laugh at when I I watch that movie. I I, I must have watched it you know thirty times at this point and. It's there's always something new. Like, you know how it took me so long to realize when they were talking about he's in the Ford Galaxy. Like, I don't know why it took me so long to realize that, you know, that's a car type of thing, but oh man, I didn't I didn't put that together. I just not, not just not a big car person, but that's uh that's extra funny then that they uh did that on purpose. They like so there's a there's a few movies that I can watch no matter if it's you know at any time. So it's Spaceballs, it's Hackers, it's Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, Dumb and Dumber. You know, all those movies, if it's on, I'm watching it. You know, if I, I need to have, you know, I'm doing laundry, I'll put that one of those movies on and start folding clothes because I'll, I'll just go through the movie, you know. I'm familiar with all of those except Hackers. Hackers is such a great movie. So that's got Angelina Jolie before she was like anybody. Um, there was, um, the guy, he was, he's a Sherlock now and I can't remember what, what his actually real name is, but, uh, Benedict? Ma uh, no, not Benedict Cumberbatch. It was or the, Martin Freeman. No, it it was the CBS one. I think might oh, okay. be like Sherlock Holmes or something like their homes. I forget what it was. There's Matthew Lillard in it. Um, I can't remember who else is in there, but yeah, it's this, uh, evil corporation, is trying to take over and uh, you know solicit money and put a, a virus in a system and you know all these hackers come together to destroy the virus. Oh, Penzlet's also in there as well. But yeah, it's it's definitely a, a if you haven't seen it, I mean it's, right now it's it's very outdated, but I can still watch it. You know, just like it was the first time I watched it. Right. All right. It's just that all the other ones you named were uh, you know obvious comedies there and uh this one uh just it doesn't doesn't quite fit that bill oh it does say comedy crime thriller yeah i mean there are some funny parts in there but yeah i 
I wouldn't consider it a comedy. Um, I mean, Office Space is another one I can always watch. Oh man, I'm a I'm a guest on another podcast school about uh, old school, and then uh, another one not long after that about a uh, Rush Hour versus Shanghai Noon. Okay, I was thinking Rush more. I was like, how how they're not the same at all, but. No. <laughs> Every once in a while, I will like I'll get in one of those dry comedies like Rushmore or um, what's the one about the sparkling mind or something? I forget what it is. Oh, there's Bill Murray's like Lost in Translation that like was just so like dry and like I I can watch those movies, but and then I also like those you know Dumb and Dumber and, and uh, you know <laughs> Billy Madison th- stuff like that, which I can like to sit there and quote it, and I have full two-way conversations with myself the wife will be in the other room who are you talking to i was just talking to myself i don't need you for this conversation i got this <laughs> she gets she gets mad at me for like having like not only will i do like, billy madison quotes but i'll well i'll come out from the bedroom from folding clothes i'll come out and like i'll say something to her and then i'll give her my her response in my voice as her which sounds nothing like her then i'll answer myself from the response from me so i'll go back and forth and she goes you don't even need me i'm like you're correct i don't need you (laughs) (laughs) i will say uh two of my favorite comedies are anchorman and another one called kung pao that's um a beer one right uh no no that this one has, I think it's directed by and stars Steve Odenkirk, Stephen Odenkirk. Uh, but he takes another movie and just green screens himself in it. And he dubs all the lines himself. And uh, it is just one of the utterly most ridiculous things I've ever seen. And uh, I love it. I know, I know it sounds familiar. Um, so ent- Kung Pao, Enter the Fist, right? Enter the fist, yes. Yeah, there we go. I do. I remember, but it's it's been a while since I. See, I think I probably like seen it once. Um, uh, so did you ever see the, uh, I guess, uh, director's cut of Anchorman? It wasn't like a, it wasn't the sequel. It was like the director's cut of uh, uh, it was like the story of Ron Burgundy or something like that. Which I don't it think ha- so. It had a lot more like brick parts in it, which you know I like brick. Uh. Rick's character of you know love and lamp and <laughs> i don't remember what it was called but yeah there was like kind of an extended uh version of the first one it wasn't into the second one but yeah there's a lot more brick in that one uh i thought that was definitely Damn. i think that's better than the original you know anchorman yeah i i'm not familiar with this uh but i have to see it now another one it's goes away from your comedy but i know it's the disaster artist and um james franco yeah and i can't remember what it's about um the room there we go oh okay all right there's the room which is the original one which uh that has tommy wusso tommy wusso yeah and then the disaster artist is the making of the room so both of those are really good watches um and it's one of those like it, he wanted it to be a, a good american movie and it like it just become a cult classic and like uh, you can't like rent it on any like streaming services you had to buy it directly from him and you know he wanted all of the money to come in so it's it's definitely worth a watch if you can if you can find it but oh man i have seen it and yeah yeah just crazy i remember reading the trivia for that movie, I, I like to read the trivia after I watch something. And, uh, you know, it, it said in there something about him thinking that maybe he's a vampire or something. I was like, what? This is crazy. And then the Disaster Artist movie came out. And I think even in the trailer, I, I haven't seen it. So it must have been in the trailer. James Franco, you know, in Tommy Wiseau's voice says, uh, maybe I'm a vampire or something. I don't know. And I'm like, what? This is actually like, no way. No way. Yeah, it's one of those. It's. It's hard to watch because it's so bad that it's good. But <laughs> the best thing is to get someone who knows nothing about it, sitting them sitting next to them, putting on the movie, and make them them watch from start to finish. They'll 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 hate you, but then you'll laugh at it the whole time. It's like, 
what is this garbage you're making me watch? Oh no, don't worry. It gets it gets worse the more you watch it. So. Oh, man. And uh it was maybe within the last five to ten years, what he came out with another movie called Best Fiends, starring him and the same guy from Yeah, Greg something or other. Um yeah, I don't think I've ever watched that. Uh, no, I didn't either. But uh but I was just curious that, that that was something that happened later. <laughs> So this is pretty much what your podcast is about. If, am I correct? Uh, trivia about, is it just uh, TV shows or do you go into movies as well? Uh, I've covered two movies right now, Blues Brothers and Home Alone. But yeah, I stick to mostly TV shows, asking trivia questions about TV shows and uh, more so about what actually happens in the episode more than the behind the scenes stuff. You know, like uh, I, I, I love trivia, you know, but I always found myself that I was never very good at it. You know, uh, when I go to bar trivia with my friends, I can do the movie round, maybe swing a couple of general knowledge questions. You lose me on sports, uh, maybe some of the music ones too. But uh, I don't know, I, I wanted to do a podcast about TV trivia where, you know, uh, each episode covers a season and range of episodes. So maybe like The Office, season three, episodes one to five. And so if you wanted to, you could go back and watch those and like just kill all this trivia if you wanted. Or you could go off the top of your head and, you know, so, yeah, it's about things that happen in the show. Do you find more people uh, try to wing it and try to uh, go from memory or do more people go like I I have homework, I'm going to do it, I'm going to watch it and I want to be great in this, not okay. (laughs) Uh, I find most people actually go back and uh, watch it ahead of time. I've only had a handful of people that haven't, but uh, but the people that do rewatch it do uh, do a really good job. But uh, I don't think anyone's gotten all the questions for both the regular episode and the bonus episode. Some of them get really specific, but uh, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, like I was telling you before we started recording this, I was listening to the episode with. Uh... Caitlin and Brian from Domestic Disputes, which if anyone who's listened to all of my episodes will know that she's actually been on here. Um, and that's why I kind of picked that episode to start listening to. But yeah, in that, that episode that neither one of them watched the boys and they're kind of like, had, I was up, up to the point where they had like one and a half points a piece or something. So um, yeah, like, like I said, I, I kind of was, was familiar with those people. So I kind of, that's the one that I wanted to check out, but it definitely sounds like an interesting show to be on, be a part of. Uh, sounds like a whole bunch of fun. Uh, I like it a lot. Like, uh, ha- have you seen The Office? Yes. I, I think I've, I think I've seen all, all, every episode, but it's one of those like pretty much just once and just keep going through and like, it's always on Comedy Central. So I'm pretty much always on so it's an easy show to watch uh all the time but like uh, a couple like i could ask you so like some questions from that like uh like what was the name of michael scott's screenplay oh that was just on not that long ago but um <laughs> it was something like danger something um and now I, I i i can give you the first word okay threat uh threat level zero Threat level midnight. Oh, so close. <laughs> Threat level midnight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how about when Jim impersonates Dwight? Uh, what are the three B's he says? Uh, yeah, that one I can't remember. Uh, Bears beats Battlestars Galactica. <laughs> That's right. He is he is a beat farmer with Moe's and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> yep. Yep. So uh, yeah, it's just questions like that. Questions from the show uh, that are you know I personally have fun answering and. So thought they would thought it would be fun to do. So do you like well, watch an episode or a series of episodes and then you'll write down questions as you go and then like this will make a good episode down the line type of thing. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a little bit of homework there. You know, I have to watch TV and uh <laughs> come up with questions for it. So uh so yeah, uh all all the questions I come up with myself after watching the episode. And do you take like suggestions from like guests and stuff like that? Well, can we do one on, uh, you know, Alf season three, you know, episode, you know, two, you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, for, 
Well, first off, I do have something that uh, where people can suggest people who aren't even on the show. Anybody can submit questions for me to ask uh, as other trivia questions on the show. Um, I haven't taken too many requests, just uh, just random shows. I, I try and cover a certain number of shows at a time. Uh, you know, like my first 10 episodes were on The Office, and then I did eight episodes covering all of Rick and Morty, and now I'm doing eight episodes covering all of The Boys. So, you know, uh, I'm trying to keep it to one show at a time. So if this is something you've seen, then you can participate in for the next uh, month or two. And uh, you, you come out with weekly episodes or... Uh, yep, yep, weekly stuff. Yeah, like, so speaking of the boys, I think... I think I watched a whole first season and like the first, I don't know, let's say six episodes, I want to say were good, but then like it started to get, go down here really quick. I think like, oh, by man, the, really? So I'm like, I kind of like at, at near the end, I'm like, I kind of just kind of like struggle to, to watch it. And I don't think I watch any of the second season. Like I want to like it, but it's just like that and like the umbrella cap uh umbrella umbrella company academy Academy. yeah Yeah, academy yeah i think i still have like two episodes left of season two to finish that was another like disappointing like second season type of thing uh you know sorry sorry if i break your heart or something (laughs) no no no, no, you're good you're good you know uh the boys i think is excellent i think you should see uh if, if you've gotten through that much of the first season i would at least watch the season finale and see if you want to continue the second season from there. I, I thought the second season was still great. Uh, the Umbrella Academy, I don't think uh, I felt the the rave for that everyone else did. You know, there's these shows that people just can't stop talking about, like uh, Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad. And, you know, when the Umbrella Academy was out, the Umbrella Academy. And, you know, I thought it was entertaining, but it certainly wasn't the best TV I've ever seen. It was, it, yeah, it was entertaining. Yeah, until like you you find out. Well, I mean, I'm kind of a, like I'm a dumb watcher. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I I'm in the moment. You know, the thirty or sixty minutes uh, of an episode, I'm in there. I don't try to outthink or bring in sources from here and say, like, well, by by this, the mountain actually meant to do this and stuff like that. Which actually, I didn't get to Game of Thrones until like right before the last season was on. That's when I just binge watched every episode up until then i'm like i, I did the same I, thing i don't know why it took me so long to watch this because i kind of actually liked it but you know it wasn't like i said until the the new se- the final season's coming up and then it's like all right i gotta hurry up and catch up with everything um that's that's another one where uh, i don't know if it was because i i waited and uh just waited to the end there but uh, and like binged all eight seasons in less than a month but that that was another one that I didn't quite see what people were clamoring about so much. You know, uh, I liked it, but uh, I've seen better. And, and one, I think uh, one series that I think people are always surprised that I can never get into is The Sopranos. You know what? I did that one, too. And I can see that, you know, uh, I, I don't know if it got its acclaim because it was like one of the first shows where, you know, it. it one of the first shows that felt like Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad that everybody was talking about type thing. But it certainly wasn't the most thrilling or it left you on a cliffhanger at the end of every episode. You know, uh, I I didn't find myself craving the next episode like I do for other shows. Yeah, I think I'm still in the, uh, this is still the the uh, not good part of the show. Once you get, you know, like, you know, 30 more episodes in, then it really starts getting good. Well, if I had to, you know, uh, go 80 episodes before it starts getting good, you know, do I really want to waste 80, 90 hours of my time hoping it gets better, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. For for podcasts, I might give you like uh, five to 10 episodes before I determine whether I really want to continue it or not. For TV shows, it's maybe two seasons because uh season one of the office and parks and rec i thought were atrocious uh like uh i i would have stopped if i didn't keep on watching it and then uh season season two of both made me fall in love with the show so uh, i i try and give things a little bit longer well season one of the office is pretty much at least the first couple episodes are almost identical to the english version of it yeah yeah i did read that and uh 
you know, I, I watched the English version of it. And again, that's just not, it just wasn't for me. And there's only what, like something like eight or 12 total episodes in the, in the uh, UK version of it, right? Something short like that, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's not long. Just like uh, in the American version, season one was only six episodes, and I think season two was probably twenty plus, or or at least fifteen plus. Uh, but you know, I, I have a book on The Office, and you know what they said they really wanted to change for the American version was make the boss have some redeeming quality. You know, uh, David Brent in the UK version was just this unlikable character, unapologetically unlikable. And you couldn't, you just couldn't connect with him at all. And, you know, by the end of season seven, when, you know, people, I still know people that refuse to watch season eight and nine of the office because the manager, Steve Carell just isn't there. And we all connected with him so much, you know? Did you ever watch the, uh, the David Brent movie? I didn't see the movie. Oh, I know it's, it's out, but I haven't seen the movie. It's, it's one of those, it's, it's, you know, it's just like David Brent from from the show. It's very uncomfortable, and you know, it, he, you know, um, oh man, I am not I'm not good with uh, things today. Um, and, and he's always on the show that I, I listen to too. But Ricky Gervais, there we go. Yeah, and, yeah. He, uh, yeah, he's perfect in that. You know, it's 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 way how you would think David would David Brent would be if he was a magician. It's just so like cringeworthy, and it's worth a watch. He's a talented guy, but I couldn't get through the um, one where he's in a mental like David, where he's dead. No, his wife is dead. That's what it is. I couldn't get. I, I got watched like two or three episodes of that, and I I can't remember like why I stopped watching that. It sounds vaguely familiar. Uh, yeah, and like I said, my uh, my memory is terrible today. I cannot remember Afterlife. No, does that sound about right? That sounds like it could be right. Uh. No, it was Derek. Derek's another one where he works in like he works as a nurse or something, kind of a kind of incompetent. I think I might have watched one or two episodes because I like Ricky Gervais. I think he's funny, but I just couldn't get into him. You know, like it's one of those. Yeah, if if you get it, you know, three, four, or five episodes in, it starts picking up. But how much time do I want to waste before you know this is what I want to watch type of thing? So sure. I will say I just finished two shows that I thought were excellent. And uh, the first one was Hannibal, uh, which I just thought was so good. That's one that left me like needing to watch the next one after one episode would end. And uh, Chernobyl on HBO. Uh, and wow, what a that was a ride. Yeah, like my friend keeps telling me I have to finish Chernobyl. I, I think I watched half watched like the first two or three episodes and i know i gotta like pay full attention like like anything that's like lost or sopranos things like that like you have to like pay full attention to it otherwise it's you're gonna get lost in that so i haven't like sat down and actually watched it but i i heard chernobyl is supposed to be really good type of thing uh, that had me from episode one man hearing you know right after the blast and they didn't know about like radiation and stuff back then and I, I don't know. For me, it was just watching the screen and realizing that, like, wow, everybody who's like panicking and suffering here is probably going to die a horrible death from this radiation that they're not familiar with, and it's just so sad. And you know, uh, it's it's just crazy that they tried to keep on functioning, and uh, people were like standing on the bridge outside to like watch the explosion from miles away, and like what are you thinking? And, uh, oh man, it was, it was just hard to watch sometimes. And there's, there's what, like six episodes, eight episodes of that, something like that. Uh, five or six. Yeah. So now I'm on the hunt for the next great show to just, uh, keep me, keep me into it the whole time. I, so I know we were talking about, uh, anime earlier. Um, a lot of great animes out there. Holy smoke. Every, the new season of attack on Titan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So right now I, I'm in the, I, they were, I, I had a Funimation account, which was fine, but like, I seem like they're just so far behind on everything. So like when the new Attack on Titan started to come up, I think I was just transferring over to Dungeons and Dragon critical role type of thing. So like, I'm like, let me, let me put a pause on this. Cause I want to like put full attention to it, but like, 
yeah, I only got like two or three episodes in. I'm like, let me hold this off. And then I was, because I, I liked the first couple episodes, but once again, you had to, you know, there's a lot packed in that 20 minutes of, of an episode. You know, it's like, I can't, like, I need full attention. I can't, I can't do anything else. I just see they, they came out with a second season of Dr. Stone, which is really good. Oh, uh, I, I, that's on my list. I'm currently on the second season of Promise Neverland. I'm not familiar with that one, but. Attack on Titan and uh, Promise Neverland have just been holding my interest entirely. Uh, yeah, I, as far as the first four seasons of uh, Attack on, first couple episodes of season four ago that you said you were watching, I, I think the first couple maybe start a little slow, like, uh, you know, like Aaron wasn't in there and stuff. And I, I just wanted to see where he's at. What's, what's he doing now? And, uh, and, and once, once he kind of shows up, like it gets to the point where I could like feel my heart beating inside my chest and this Titan stuff is going on. And I was just freaking out. Yeah. That's one of those shows that it's kind of really like taxing on you to watch. Like you can't, <laughs> you can't really watch like, Two or three in a row, you, like I got to take a break, you know. After after all that, like I can't, I I, I got to clear my mind a little bit. It's just so, yeah. I think taxing would be the the best way to describe it. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about starting another one because another thing, what I love about anime is that, uh, so of the ones I've seen, I, I haven't seen a ton, uh, like some other people have, but uh, just if you pick the right one, the story is just so engrossing. And it's also only 20 minutes. So it's not like I have to make a time commitment to sit down and watch this 40 minute hour long episode like you have to do for Chernobyl or Hannibal, you know, uh, these longer things. It's just 20 minutes. I can watch it real quick. And, uh, you know, that that's an episode. That's a, that's a good place to stop. One of the ones I really liked was uh, The Rising of the Shield Hero. That was a really good anime. Another one I've never heard of. Uh, it's one of those that kind of get dumped into a, a a situation, and like there's there's like a fighter person, a ranger, a free, somebody else, and a, a guy who's like you know defender. He's only got a shield, and no one really likes a shield hero. And you know he's he's kind of always fighting for like respect. And is it a comedy? Uh, no, it's not a comedy. It's okay. uh, action thriller type of thing. Uh, there's another one where there's another shield one where like it like they kind of get dumped into a, like a video game setting and she doesn't want to fight anybody so she like takes a shield and just sits there and takes it well eventually she gets immune to like poison and fire and things like that so like nobody can like kill her or anything and she just becomes super powerful that they uh for the new people that are coming in they they don't want to let they like kind of cap off what they can uh they can they can do that was a really fun one and a can't remember what that's called but that was another fun one yeah i will say all the ones i watch are usually uh recommended to me from people who have seen them are you know uh i'm on imdb all the time uh their top like top tv shows list and you know a couple on there the one that got me started on it was one called steins gate and uh wow that uh that ha that that hooked me that got me and uh, i've been watching things ever since that that picked up episode 12 or 13 um you know it had a you know interesting story enough nothing that maybe like oh uh you know well i'll watch the next one tomorrow but after i got to that point i think i watched them like the next 12 like in two or three days there's another one and like i said i don't know why my brain is not functioning today but that's uh another like magic controls like the world like everyone is um has some type of a magical ability except for one person who has zero magical ability so he uh he him and his uh orphan brother um they're going to be the wizard king um so they're one's like super powerful and the other one has like, zero powers and they're they're each other's rival it's a really good show these premises you keep describing sound like comedy there's comedy parts in it but uh it's I wouldn't consider them comedy, but no, oh, yeah, yeah. I I know there's definitely uh, comedy ones out there, but you know, personally, if I'm uh, if I'm watching an anime or most foreign language things, I'm watching it for like the thriller aspect, the suspense, the uh, the the cliffhanger stuff. 
Uh, it's Black Clover. That's what it is. I couldn't think of it off the top of my head, but that's a, that's a, another really good Watts. Another one I've never heard of before. It's one of those going through like Funimation that give you, uh, you know, things you might like, or just like, sometimes I'll just go into the fan favorite section and, you know, try to look up that way. So one thing I kind of wanted, uh, kind of, we really got derailed, uh, talking about, kind of about what your show, which is fine. Um, <laughs> I mean, I knew that was going to happen, but can you kind of quickly talk about bike touring? Cause, um, I, you know, just like ultimate Frisbee, I don't have any knowledge of that. So. Sure, sure. Uh, I uh, it's just where you uh, you take a bike, you load it with a couple bags, and you ride it uh, for a couple hours every day until you get from point A to point B. Uh, so, my dad got me into it. Uh, he's had retired a couple years ago, and it went from Maine to Florida, and you know, just said it was an experience he loved. And uh, I'm a teacher, so I have my summers off, and so the next one he planned was from uh, Switzerland to uh, the Black Sea in Romania. And he asked if I wanted to come. And uh, I said, sure, why not? And just a uh, just life-changing experience. So much fun. I mean, so that it's pretty much the Tour de France, basically. Just like, a, is a long distance, basically, on a bike? It is a long distance. But the thing I want to say before anybody gets too turned off about it is that anybody can do this, all right? The, it's, it's, it is long distance, but... It's not a race, you know, um, again, when we were doing this in Europe, uh, we were following this trail called the Eurovelo six and, uh, they have bike pathways marked as clear as road signs, you know, in Europe, it was impossible to miss, you know, you like, you could see, uh, a street sign for main street and right next to it, Eurovelo six, like right on top or below it, you know, so clearly marked. And again, a lot of people are doing these these things are retired or people that have the time to do it now. So my dad was probably one of the youngest people on this trip apart from me. You pack like a 10 or something. Like, what do you like, once you like you're done for the day, what do you, what do you do? I mean, do you pour, pull off to the side of the road, pitch a tent and then sleep? Is that kind of how that works? I mean, well, uh, apparently it's in certain countries, it's illegal to put up a tent, any like you can't just do it everywhere so uh sometimes so each day uh we had planned a point a to point b we were either getting to this hotel or this campsite or uh, another program called a couch surfer or warm showers it's similar to airbnb but people let you into their house for free when my dad did this the first time in the u.s we were terrified you're, you're staying with strangers that's crazy you know uh and I was really nervous about it my first time uh, we did it in Switzerland, but it became my favorite part of the trip. Uh, the people that are hosting you are just some of the nicest you've ever met. You know, uh, my first night we stayed with this Switzerland couple. Uh, they made us this delicious ham and white asparagus dinner. Uh, and we got talking about my love of movies and I was worried I wouldn't be able to watch a movie all summer on this bike trip. And uh, he was like, Oh, I, I have a whole collection of movies. And we watched Birdman together. And another time we stayed with this girl in Austria, she was younger than me just by a couple of years, still in her twenties, but a couple years younger than me. And she let these two grown men into her place by herself. And then she left to go to a party. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, my friends are doing something in the town over. I'm going to leave. And uh, you know, I'll be back by morning. And she left, left these two grown men that she's never met before in her place. And, you know, it's just baffling. Ba like, but, you know, uh, these people were so nice. You know, we're friends on Facebook. Her family owned uh, some apricot uh, farm and winery. And, you know, she left us with this juice and apricot breakfast stuff in the morning. And, oh, my gosh, it... it you have to do it. It, it. These people are just the best. You said there was some like site or something that you can go on that like these are like designated spot, uh, stops, spots to stop along the way type of thing or? Uh, like as far as when we were getting from point A to point B? Like when you say uh, you're a you're random Switzerland person that's, uh, you know, hey, come on in and then I'm, I'm going to leave because I got something else to do. 
Yeah, yeah, there, there's a website for that. Just like Airbnb, you search an area for available hosts and then email them a couple of days ahead of time. And, you know, if you can stay there and uh, make it work from there. But again, th- th- this is all just part of the philosophy of it too. Um, when we were riding closer to Romania, uh, there was a 70-year-old Israeli man who was doing the same tour we were, uh, but by himself. And again, not not in great shape, because again, you don't have to be in great shape to do this. You just have to be willing to. So he would start earlier than my dad and I would. You know, we would pass him on the road, and he would get to the same location a couple hours later. And that was totally fine, you know. Th- this It's not... It's not a race. You can take as many breaks as you want. You can stop in as many towns as you want. You know, this guy was doing it by himself. Took a couple hours longer than we did, but, you know, still got there. So it's more of a, like, hobby or recreational thing as compared to, like, a competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all just for you to get out and explore, I think. That, do you find people that will like bring cameras along and like stop, you know, every, you know, let's say 50, 100 miles or whatever, and see something on the road and, and pull out a camera and set up a photo shoot somewhere? I mean, uh, we didn't see too much of that. I mean, there, there were sure there were stops that we made it too. There was like, oh, I need to take a picture of this right now and just took out my phone and took a quick picture, but, uh, but, you know, not too many fancy photo shoots. You know, and I will say the level of preparedness changed as well. Uh, we we are the type of people that my dad had the whole thing planned before we left. Every day we knew how far we were riding, where we were stopping, uh, you know, McDonald's for Wi-Fi in the area or different grocery stores where uh, this Israeli man said, oh, I would just start and stop when I feel tired. <laughs> like... Man, I don't think I personally would be able to do that, not knowing where I was going to sleep that night. Uh, this guy just went for it and, you know, was totally fine. You know, this is all something that you can do however you will like. Well, did your dad come from a, like a military background where like he needed pretty much everything plotted out or he wasn't going to do it? Or that's for this particular, you know, uh, hobby, he, th- that's what he was going to do? He's just a planner. Yep, that's it. So he's he's got his whole syllabus listed, you know, weeks in advance. This is what we're going to do. You know, the, we know exactly what we're going to st- where we're going to eat, where we're going to go to the bathroom. You know, where we're going to sleep. You know, here's our next you know twelve weeks planned out completely for you. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, today we're riding. You know, on on June thirteenth, we're riding fifty miles. Uh, at mile twenty, there's a grocery store for us to pick up lunch and some extra water. And uh, you know, uh, the whole thing planned out, and it it, it worked really well for us. I mean, uh, it, it it was perfect. We knew where we were stopping and uh, certain breaks we we're gonna have. We're both also the type of people that. Uh, let's, once we get started, let's get to point A to point B as fast as possible so we can stop riding, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, we weren't, we're not really the take our time and, uh, smell the roses type people. So what do you do for like breakdowns? Like if you get a flat or, uh, <laughs> you know, your brakes get disconnected. I don't know. You know? <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, well, we started with really good tires, uh, that, you know, were supposed to be, you know, high class, almost puncture proof stuff just to avoid that if we can. And we, of course, we're traveling with uh, spare tires as well. But uh, on the first time I did this, I did it on a bike my dad bought for me on Craigslist for like $150 from the 80s. Uh, Really old, really old, now cheap bike. Uh, And the last maybe week or two, I noticed the rims on my bike cracking. So where the spokes attached to the tire, that metal there was was tearing, which isn't supposed to happen. We can't fix that. We can fix a flat tire or brakes. We can't fix a bike rim. Uh, So it was in Bulgaria in Silistra where uh, we... We usually leave at like seven, eight in the morning, ride a couple hours, 
Uh, we had to wait for this like hardware shop to open at 3 p.m. They had a tire they were able to bolt on, and then we left. But the tire he bolted on, uh, it the the tire inside the wheel there just wasn't quite right. That popped later, and the bolt he used was just so tight we didn't have the tools to unscrew it. We walked our bikes for maybe an hour or two till we got to a small village where they had we were able to communicate with someone and grab tools to loosen up this tire, change change the tire, and uh, change the flat, and then get on the road again. We we maybe got to our destination between 12 and 1 a.m. And uh, the whole experience was just crazy, but something I'm never going to forget. Something I'm never going to forget. Is that kind of like your, like, horror story like the the worst it's got or I that's mean, the are, one yeah everything else was peachy everything else was totally fine everything else is pretty much uh fix on the fly you know type of thing we didn't have any problems the rest of the time uh no flats no brake problems always had enough food for like uh lunch and stuff in our bags yeah totally fine that kind of goes back to the uh, always like kind of being prepared and stuff like that. So I'm sure you and your dad probably go through like a whole checklist of check this, check this, check this, check this, check this. All right, good, 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 good. All right, we're we're set for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a list of uh, things that again, my dad had done this before. Told me that I needed to have before I got started here. Uh, you know, we had a, a list so we knew what was in each bag. Uh, so we could quickly grab it in case of like rain or something. And one of the questions I got well, f- thought of just now, but when you're going like going to Europe or wherever, how do you get the bikes over there? I mean, <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. that might be a dumb question, but you know, if you're you're going from you know starting in your state and you go down to Florida, that's you know one thing. But like, yeah, do you just get on a plane with the bikes and then you know pick them up, or do you like rent them somewhere there? You can rent. Uh, we dismantled our bikes and put them in a box and sent them over. So uh, a lot of bike shops will apparently uh, give you a bike box to ship it in for free uh, just because, you know, their bikes, that's how they get their bikes. And then, you know, they're not really going to do anything with the boxes. So they'll let give them to you for free so that you can, uh, you know, take apart your bike uh, and ship it over. And then you put it back together again. When you get to Europe, do you do you put it together, or does the bike shop put it together, or it's either way? But I'm sure there's like a feed involved type of thing, or right, right, right. Uh, we put it together. Then you don't you don't have to take apart too much of it. Uh, you know, you uh, unscrew the front tire, which is a you know a real easy. You just tighten and loosen type thing. Uh, same with the handlebars. Um, maybe fenders and the racks, but uh, most of it was a real simple uh, tightening and loosing scenario. You know, it's not like where we had to take off like the chain ring or the cassette, which needs like a tool that only a bike shop would have. You know, none of that. No, it was a little less complicated than that. And so what kind of bikes do you actually use for this? I mean, I don't, I can't imagine like a, a big like mountain bike with heavy tires are you kind of like one of those skinny tired bike? Is that kind of what I'm picturing or? Somewhere in between it, it, it's called a touring bike. Uh, you know, we don't want a mountain bike. Those tires are too wide and a road bike. Uh, the tires are too thin kind of, you know, we're not on the road all the time. Sometimes we're off road. So, uh, you want a tire that's, you know, is thinner than a mountain bike, but thicker than a road bike to absorb some of the shock from trails and stones and uh, all that stuff on it. So uh, it, it's somewhere somewhere in between. Of course, I was going to ask about like shifting and stuff, but I mean, do you have, is it is it a one speed bike or do you like actually shift through gears and stuff or it's personal preference? Uh, you should probably have a bike with a lot of gears on it. Uh, I had a, a two speed bike uh, on the last one here, which we did from my house in Pennsylvania to my brother's in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And, uh, you know, you, you just need a low gear to go up a lot of the Hills, you know, you're packing, you know, uh, maybe 30 to 50 extra pounds of weight on your bike with all these bags and gear on it. 
you need a low gear to to get you to get you moving. I mean, I guess if you're just gonna go on a flat plane with you know no no load, then you can go with a one speed or two speed bike. But yeah, if you if you're gonna be hauling, I, I would yeah, I guess you would need lower gears to you know put more torque on it. So yeah, yeah, sure. And that was mostly our our last uh, couple of days on the ride, riding through Indiana and Illinois. Some of the most boring riding I've ever done. I've never seen so much corn. But, uh, but you know, it's mostly flat. Uh, but, you know, I, I remember going up one hill uh, in the middle there in one of those states and, you know, being in the lowest gear and I don't know, you, you just never know when you're going to hit a hill and uh, need all the help you can get. Of course, if you don't have that gear, you, uh, you walk it, you know, but. Uh, that was my next question. Like, how often does it come to the point where you're like, man, I, I can't, I'm either too tired or it's too steep. I'm going to have to walk this up. Does that happen often or? Uh, I, I did, I didn't on the European tour. Uh, that bike had, you know, three possible gears for me to switch between. I had a different bike for my U S tour, and that I had to walk a little bit at the beginning. Uh, some pretty steep hills in Pennsylvania and New York that I couldn't quite make it up by myself. Yeah, but on, on the downslope, it's like, wee! <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Yeah, that can be fun. <laughs> so do you, how often do you do, like, round trips then? Like, if you're going to go from PA to, you know, Missouri, North Carolina, is, is it most of the time just a one-way trip and then bike, uh, ship it back? Or how often do you do round trips? Uh, I We've never done a round trip. Uh so my dad did Maine to Florida, you know, flew home. We did Switzerland to Romania, you know, flew back to the States. And this time uh, my mom picked us up in St. Louis so that she, you know, so she could come down and see my brother, you know, we could all be together. So uh, we've never done a round trip. I mean, is it to the point where like you would almost have to just cut it in half so you would do like the same amount and just do half of it you know, one way and then halfway back or just like, like we've already went through this place. We don't need to see it again. Is that kind of how it is? I mean, you know, I think a big part of it is just seeing new things, seeing new places. So if we were going to do a round trip, it wouldn't be an out and a back, but uh, find a new way home. You know, uh, so maybe if we start north going to New York, maybe we cut uh, west and, you know, down Ohio and West Virginia and, you know, come up through Virginia, Maryland, and then back home or something. Do almost like an oval type of thing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. See as much as we can. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I guess. Um, so what bike are you riding with now? Uh, if when you do ride. Right. Uh, the one I had was a Trek Checkpoint AL4, but uh, I recently sold that. Um, I was running into issues where my foot would hit the tire uh it's more of a gravel bike instead of a touring bike so maybe that was part of the reason i'm in the process of trying to find uh, a fuji touring disc bike but uh bikes are just really hard to come by during the pandemic apparently like everybody bought one and all the shops are like months behind schedule so i'm doing what i can well i mean i guess when you figure you have you know a at least six, eight weeks. And now it's, it's coming up to about a year now. I mean, of Hey, I got some free time. I'm, let's go, you know, take a trip somewhere, you know, just kind of like all of your AV equipment, like bikes and cameras and stuff like that. Like all your webcams pretty much went off the shelf trying to find, you know, uh, Logitech 920 was almost impossible to find. Yeah. Yeah. And summer's going to be here before we know it. So, uh, hoping to have another bike soon. Do you have anything planned in the near future or is it still, you're not sure what's going on? Uh, I think my dad has something planned. Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head, you know, he did, he, I did have something planned for Europe, but again, with these travel restrictions and, uh, you know, just being safe, uh, in general, it's, we're probably not going to do that. So, uh, maybe something in the, uh, in the States again. All right. Sounds good. Um, so before we finish this off, um, you remind people uh, where they can find you. Sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, I host a podcast called TV Trivia Pod, where I ask trivia questions from TV shows. You can follow me at uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at TV Trivia Pod. 
and find the podcast on all your podcast platforms. But again, uh, you can listen and answer questions like the ones we did earlier. What's the name of Michael Scott's screenplay? Uh, you know, who replaces Pam the first time she leaves for art school? Uh, maybe what's the name of her art school in New York? You know, things like that. And, uh, you know, I've done some of The Office, Rick and Morty, and The Boys right now. So I'm uh, looking forward to many more. Yeah, from what I uh, listened to, it sounded uh, like a good fun time. So, uh, yeah, it was fun having you on here. I'm glad, you know, we could discuss some things that I didn't know anything about. That I mean, that's the whole purpose of this show. It's all about exploration. I'm going to try to find out what other people are into. So uh, I had a fun time talking to you. So unless you had anything else to add, I think uh, this will be a good time to end the episode. So, oh, yeah. Thanks for having me again. That's one of the reasons I love podcasting out to just the people you meet. Uh, it's just so much fun meeting somebody new. So, yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Like I said, uh, with that, I'm going to say goodbye, everybody. You have been listening to Firing Synapses with Matt Hamity. I want to thank everyone who listened to the show. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with your friends. Also, feel free to send all questions, comments, constructive criticisms, and new topics to mhamityphoto at gmail.com. That's M-H-A-M-I-D-Y photo at gmail.com. It just may end up on a future episode. If you would also like to help the show... You can follow me on all your social media platforms, which includes Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it's still free. Otherwise, goodbye, everybody.